So spacing of practice uh, and the so-called spacing effect, which actually goes back across our entire history of controlled experimentation on human memory because Ebbinghaus in 1885 did what's usually considered the first systematic research, empirical research on human memory. And uh, he did this with himself as a single subject, but nonetheless in a very controlled, uh, clever, informative way. But he noticed in learning these lists of nonsense syllables, those are items like dax and jom and tal and so on that are pronounceable. He invented them, incidentally, because he wanted learning, new learning, not to be corrupted by sort of learning you already knew. He found when he was learning those lists of nonsense syllables that if he spaced his learning trials, that after initial learning episode, he didn't <clears throat> schedule the next one right away, but after a while, that that enhanced long-term memory. And since in the whatever that would be now, 126 years or so since that time, uh, this has been illustrated in work with animals, humans, procedures, factual knowledge, uh, the spacing effect can sometimes be very, very robust. And to this day, there are competing theories, and uh, those theories may all be partly right, which is why it's perhaps so prevalent. But the spacing effect then refers to the fact that the more uh, study opportunities are spaced apart, the better long-term memory. That's the generalization but it's much more interesting and somewhat more complex than that. If the final retention interval is very short from the last time you studied and then you test it almost immediately, then you don't tend to get a spacing effect. You can actually get massing better. So for example, to, to apply this to the uh, college situation, cramming can actually be a good thing to do from a standpoint of your getting a grade. If you don't know the material and haven't appropriately spaced your study across the term, you're not going to make up something like sleeping overnight or something. So the kind of thing where you stay up all night and cram, that's mass practice, no good for long-term recall. But if you stay up all night, study, cram, whatever, and walk into the exam, you can actually perform pretty well on that exam. So, but the problem is, not too long after that, this mass practice will lead to almost, you know, very poor retention. So as far as the material in that course carrying over to other courses, to your life in general, it's an awful thing to do. So uh, it's, there's a complex relationship basically to oversimplify it a bit. Um, the more things are, are massed together, uh, the more you will see apparent benefits on the short term. The more they're spread apart, the more you'll see kind of real benefits on the long term. It is possible to space too much, and, and in some ways that's just intuitive. If, if, I, if I let extraordinary time go by between when I first study something and now I restudy it, it'll be almost like that restudy is the first one. I mean, not to a surprising extent, you can have a very, very long spacing, but there is an optimum. So for a given retention interval, there tends to be an optimal spacing interval. It tends to be very long, but, um, but there's a, a peak that performance, as I increase that spacing, performance will increase a lot to some point, and then gradually I'll get too much spacing.